Hi, my name is Brittany Partridge and I'm an attorney at Butler Calm Law Firm. Today I'm going to talk about emotional distress claims and when they can be brought in Georgia. So in Georgia there are two different types of emotional distress claims. First is the negligent infliction of emotional distress and second is the intentional infliction of emotional distress. Let's first talk about that negligent infliction of emotional distress. The key word is negligent. This is not willful, it's not intentional, it's caused by somebody's negligence. A physical impact to the person is going to be required. So let's break that down. If a parent is in a, let's call vehicle two, their child is in vehicle one, the at-fault driver pulls out in front of their child in vehicle one and causes a collision. The mother in vehicle two witnesses the whole thing. They actually wind up witnessing their child even pass away on the scene because the collision was so severe. In Georgia, that mother is not going to be able to bring a claim for the negligent infliction of emotional distress because there was no physical impact to her. Now that sounds extreme, but there are going to be situations where you can bring a claim for negligent infliction of emotional distress, but it's going to be when you have, again, that physical impact. But again, I'm going to talk about another example of when a parent is not going to be able to bring a claim for negligent infliction of emotional distress. And that's going to be having to watch their child go through recovery. So say their child is in a car wreck and they have a really badly broken leg. The recovery takes months. The parents had to take off work to take their child to and from a doctor's appointments. They've had to you know, stay awake through the night to make sure their child's okay. In that situation, again, that parent is not going to be able to bring a claim for the negligent infliction of emotional distress because they were not involved in the car wreck and did not sustain a physical injury or physical impact. Now, in a different situation, if both the child and the parent were in a vehicle and the vehicle has that same car wreck where an at-fault driver pulls out in front of him, crashes, and unfortunately the child passes away, in that situation, because the mother was in the vehicle, they will likely, the mother will likely be able to bring a negligent infliction of emotional distress claim for having to see the uh, loss of their child and just being part of that actual collision. Now, intentional infliction of emotional distress, the keyword there is intentional. This must be a willful act. It is extreme behavior. It shocks the conscience. It is going to be rare that this ever occurs uh, sufficient enough to bring in a claim for intentional infliction of emotional distress. But again, keyword there, intent. So an example of when somebody would be able to bring in a claim, a claim for an intentional infliction of emotional distress or likely bring a claim is if their ex wife or ex-husband is harassing them to the point where they actually have understandable fear or understandable you know, mental anguish from the behavior. So say that the ex-spouse is calling at all hours of the night, is showing up, driving past their house real slow, leaving threatening notes at work, calling the work to try to get them fired, make false allegations, make for false allegations to the seat uh, child protective services to the police, leaves dead, you know, small dead animals on their porch, leaves double bags of, you know, dog poop, is continuously showing up at places that the ex-spouse is at and will not stop. At that point, the person is likely going to be able to bring a claim for an intentional infliction of emotional distress because that ex-partner is intentionally harassing them. They're intentionally showing up to their house. They're intentionally leaving notes. They're intentionally calling the job, trying to get them fired, intentionally calling the police. Those are all intentional acts, which makes it different than the negligent act where somebody makes a bad judgment and pulls out too soon or doesn't go fast enough. That negligence is going to be a completely different standard. But even so, with the intentional infliction of emotional distress, it is just still a tough claim because juries have a hard time valuing emotional damages, even though they're very real. It is hard to put a price on emotional well-being. And in my opinion, it's priceless, but I'm not on every jury. But if you do have any questions about emotional distress claims and when you can bring them, please feel free to reach out to Butler Con, and we'd be happy to help.